Do you want to learn how to program the best settings for your tannin water filter? A tannin filter looks like a water softener, but the settings are definitely different. Maybe you've recently invested in one of our Hume tannin filters, and you want to make sure that the settings are correct. How do the settings differ? What are the best settings? Well, I'm going to show you all of that starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. During this video, I'm going to show you all of my techniques, tips, and tricks to properly program your tannin filter to get the absolute best performance. Although the same basic settings apply to all tannin filters, I'm going to be zeroing in to our Hume tannin filter because it features the Clack WS1 valve, and that's the industry standard out there, so it's really the best valve. I'll show you how easy it is to program these valves, and along the way, I'll also show you what settings you definitely don't want to touch. I'll also highlight the settings that when you're first installing your Hume tannin filter that you want to make sure you adjust correctly. And by the way, keep in mind that when you first uh, power up your valve, leave it plugged in for 24 hours. That way the power cell backup will be initiated so that all the settings you change will be retained in the memory. Now these great clack valves are used by a number of different companies, uh, Nelson, Water Depot, Viqua, they all use the clack valve. How can you tell if yours is a clack valve or not? Well, there's a few, um, few tells, if you like. Um, the, the most obvious one is the bypass here. So, yeah, there's a few other manufacturers out there that have a bypass with these red handles on them, but the clack one is the only one where the, where the, the actual handles, the bypass handles, are pointy on one end and wider on the other end, basically shaped like an arrow. So that's one tell. Another tell is that the injector port up here, the cover port, is on the top and is round, etc. Another thing to look for is these E-clips. These E-clips that uh, hold on the, um, the drain elbow and the brine elbow, they're very distinctive. So if the back of your valve looks like this, then you have a Clack WS1 valve. Don't just go by the faceplate. The faceplates can be bigger, they could be different shapes, the buttons can be in different configurations, but they're all Clack WS1 valves if they have these basic configurations on the, on the back part of the valve. And by the way, if you're looking for a tannin filter that features this great Clack WS1 valve, you can go to our websites, either waterestore.com in the US or waterestore.ca in Canada. Now before we go any further, you definitely want to know how a tannin filter works. If you're not sure, again, I've got a link in the description down below to one of my great YouTube videos that describes the whole process. And by the way, if you're ever looking for a basic manual for your Clack tannin filter, all you need to do is remove the faceplate with these tabs at the side, and then check inside here. You'll see there's a QR code. So with your smartphone, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you right to a basic manual. Now, if you're looking for an, a more in-depth manual, I've got them and I'll put a link in the description down below. So first, let's talk about what the different buttons do. So set clock, just like a clock radio. Set clock, the hours flash up or down. Set clock, the minutes flash up or down. Set clock, you're done. Just be careful that the AM and the PM are in the top right hand corner. A little difficult to see sometimes. You can remove the faceplate, it makes it a little bit easier to read uh, when you are setting the clock. The next button, when we get into the programming, it takes you to the next stage of the programming. The regen button, that's how you can manually regenerate uh, your tannin filter. If you push that button once, it'll schedule a regeneration for tonight. I'll just do that. See it says regen today in the top um, right hand side. You can click it again, that turns it off. If you want to regenerate it right now, then you push the button, you hold it down for five seconds, and away it goes. Why would you want to regenerate it right now? Well, obviously during troubleshooting, but uh, sometimes people shut off their water for extended periods of time. Often tannin filters are located in cottages and cabins. So uh, you may have to shut off the water for a period of time because you're away. When you come back, you turn on the water, you press and you hold down that regenerate button for five seconds or more. You'll hear the motor start up and then you let it go through its uh, cycle. And the up and the down arrows are for up and down. <laughs> Also, when your tannin filter is in the service position and you're on the home screen, you have actually three choices of what you can display. You can display the current time. If you press next, it'll also tell you the flow rate. So this is the gallons per minute of water that's flowing through your tannin filter at this current period of time. And then the last button is gallons capacity. So it's how many gallons of capacity you still have remaining on your tannin filter before it's time for it to regenerate. 
So when you get to the programming, you may encounter that your valve is locked. Now, typically we don't lock them uh, to send them out because we trust you guys, but uh, some manufacturers do lock them. So to lock or unlock, it's a simple four button uh, procedure. And I'll show you that right now. You go the down, you go the next, you go the up and you press set clock. And now it's locked the valve, okay? To unlock it again, we same procedure. Down, next, up, set clock, and now it's unlocked. Okay, great. So let's start with the tannin filter sequence settings. So press the next and the down button and hold them both down together at the same time until the screen changes. As soon as the screen changes, do that again. Okay, so here's displaying 1.0 and that's telling us what size of a valve we have on here. So it's a 1.0 valve and I'll just show you some of the other settings. Now this is one setting you have to be very careful of that um, that you don't um, uh, set up incorrectly because you, your tannin filter d definitely won't work. So definitely pay attention at this point. And by the way, if you didn't get to this stage, um, for whatever reason the buttons weren't responding, that means your valve's locked and you need to unlock it. All right, so if we press the up button, we can say 1.25, so it's one and a quarter inch valve, 1.5 inch valve, 2.0, and 1.0T, which I'm gonna get out of quickly. Now that 1.0T is if you have a dual tank system and uh, you have to be careful um, we had a recent situation where someone uh, received uh, one of these valves and it was programmed as a 1.0 t and it kept getting into an error code error code 106 so if you run into that error code that's the problem okay so when we've got that 1.0 flashing for this one inch valve then we press next so alt off so this setting, you have to realize these clack valves are used for a whole bunch of different industrial type applications. And uh, so if you had um, a dual system that has two of these valves, you'd be uh, setting this. But again, you need to leave it at Alt Off, press Next, and then it says DP Off. So there's a setting on here that you can um, hook this up with a cable to a dip switch. But again, we're, that's not that doesn't apply here. So again, you press Next. So your first cycle is going to be backwash, as you see. So the one just tells you that's the first cycle, and two tells you what cycle that it's on. And uh, and with these settings, with the up and down arrows, you can change the cycle. Now this is the correct setting for a tannin filter, but if for some reason you're sort of set incorrectly, this is where you would change that. So again, you leave that at backwash, and then we press next. So now it's in down brine. So that's the cycle that we want to use set up for this tannin filter. That's the second cycle. And then we go to third. So again, it's another backwash cycle. Press next, and we go four, it's a rinse. So after it's backwashed, um, and again, if you aren't sure how these things work, I do have that uh, video I talked about earlier and a uh, link to it in the description down below, but the rinse rinses all the brine out of the, the uh, tank when it's going through its regeneration cycle. And then you press next. So that's the fill cycle. So this is a, a post-fill tannin filter. So it's going to fill the brine tank. So it starts making brine for the next cycle at this stage. And then we press next. So this is important. The next cycle has to say end. If it says something else, then it's going somewhere else. So you need to make sure. And again, with the upper or the down buttons, you would set it to end. And then we press next. And again, we're back to the home screen. Okay, so now that we've got the sequences locked down, now we have to actually go into the settings. So this time you're going to press the next and the down button. You're going to hold it down till the screen changes. So at the top you'll see the word softening and that's correct. You have the other option of have it set on filtering, but that would be incorrect for this application for a tannin filter. Okay, I know a tannin filter is a filter, but you need to have it set up for the programming, uh, similar programming to a water softener. So it needs to say softening up there. So then press next. So the first is the backwash cycle. So it's gonna be a backwash for eight minutes. That's correct. So if it's set for some other period of time, then you can change it here. So again, these are the best settings. If for some reason you wanna use less water, yeah, you could move this down by a minute or two or something like that. But remember, you're compromising the best settings and you may not get the best performance. So then we press next. So now it's going to be your down brine cycle. So it's, again, it's 60 minutes. So it's going to draw the brine for 60 minutes to slowly run it over the media inside the tannin filter to clean the media and to regenerate the media so it'll continue to be removing the tannins from your water. Next. So again, another backwash after the brine cycle to get rid of all that brine, eight minutes. And again, if you want to adjust with the up or down arrow, 
Next, but these are the default settings. These are the best settings. So the rinse time is four minutes. Next, and then the pounds of salt. So the pounds of salt, this is set incorrectly for a tannin filter. So you would change this to 14. So for a one cubic foot tannin filter, that's the, what I have here, you would use 14 pounds of salt. For one and a half cubic foot tannin filter, you'd use 21 pounds of salt. Next, and then uh, this is the capacity, so it's the size of the tank. It's 80% of the size of the tank. So this is one cubic foot, which would normally be 30,000 grains. 80% of 30,000 is uh, 24,000. And that's what that's set there. And then we go to the next setting. So it says auto. So this is where, again, you have to make a change. And uh, so for a one cubic foot tannin filter, you have to change this from auto, you have to change it to 500. And you do that with these arrows. So you can hold it down, it'll go a little bit faster. Oops, there you go. So what that's telling us here is that we're, the water, the uh, tannin filter, sorry, <clears throat> is going to uh, regenerate after using 500 gallons of capacity, or you'll see another setting in, in just a moment or two, or every three days, whichever comes first. And that's how a huge area that a tannin filter programming <clears throat> differs from a water softener. Next, it's set over here to normal, so it calculates when it's going to do the regeneration, as I just mentioned, and press next. So this salt off, I always set this to off. <clears throat> this is just not worth dealing with, this whole salt uh, calculation when you need salt, and it just confuses more people than anything else. So I always suggest you leave that to set off. And then we're back at the current time. And last but not least is our installer settings. So press the next and the up button this time, hold that down and it, the first screen comes up. So this is set correctly. It has to be set for three days. So the tannin filter has to regenerate every three days or 500 gallons, as we said previously, whichever comes first. Press next. So this is what time it's gonna regenerate. So um, the default time is typically 2 a.m. Now, if you have another piece of equipment that also regenerates at 2 a.m., like a water softener or something like that, you have to change this time. So typically, I, I like to leave the water softener set at 2 a.m., and I would change this to 4 a.m., because a water softener, depending on the type, could take up to two hours to regenerate. So again, you don't want them conflicting. Press next, you set the minutes, and press next, and you're back at the home screen. So again, if we want to check the home screen settings now, if we press next, It'll tell us 0.0, .0 gallons per minute flow rate because there's no water flowing through this. Press next again, and it tells us we have 500 gallons of capacity remaining because that's the most that we have this set up for as a tannin filter. Keep in mind to get the maximum efficiency and the longest life from your tannin filter, it does need to be programmed correctly. I also suggest you get a surge suppressor. Um, Often these are installed in cottage country or cabin country and uh, the power fluctuates, etc. And that surge suppressor will save your circuit board. You'd be amazed how many times. Click up here for my next video on tannin filters and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.